Now, for more on the future of the Olympics, I spoke with David Wolichinsky. He's the president of the International Society of Olympic Historians. After seeing all the problems leading up to Rio, I began by asking him why a country would still want to host the Games. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One, there's the prestige. Uh, one, you're just big sports fans. And I'm sorry to say another reason is that uh, it's an, uh, an opportunity for a lot of uh, rich people to get some contracts and uh, make a lot of money, uh, which is, I think, uh, sadly, what we've been seeing in Rio. It didn't help the normal people very much, but uh, some people made some a lot of money. And, and speaking of a lot of people making money, what about from a cost-benefit perspective? Which games in recent years would you say have really been the big winners and which ones have been the real losers? Well, you, you haven't really had uh, an Olympics that made a profit, a real profit, since the 1984 Los Angeles Games. London did all right. Um, Atlanta even did all right. So did Sydney. But you've had some uh, real disasters. Um, in the, the classic one is Montreal. And the other one is... Uh, Athens in 2004, where they borrowed, 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 and it just wasn't worth it. They got some good infrastructure. They got some good transportation systems. But generally speaking, the, the more often than not, the venues that are built, the stadiums, don't really get put to much use afterwards. So what did Los Angeles then do right in order to, to be a successful Games? Uh, what Los Angeles did right was to put together a lot of private financing well in advance. Um, which um, the Olympics since then have tried to do, but often it falls through or often, again, through corruption or mismanagement, the money doesn't get well spent. Uh, it is possible to do all right with the Olympics and come away with some good venues and good transportation, but it doesn't always work out that way. And speaking of some of those economic benefits, and as you mentioned, sometimes not really reaching the people in need and it actually tending to benefit people who are already well off. So some argue that the long-term benefits of hosting the Games really could have been achieved by just investing that same money in other economic needs like health and education. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I agree with that 100%. Uh, it's just that, you know, often the, the money could easily have been spent uh, on, on better projects. And they only get spent on some of these projects because the Olympics becomes the excuse. But when, when people ask me, oh, you want to host the Olympics, you know, what a city wants to host with what legacy can we create? I always tell them the biggest legacy is going to be debt. Um, now, we've seen uh, for the 2024 Olympics, the two leading cities uh, who are the favorites to get that, it will be assigned next year, are Los Angeles and Paris, both of which are extremely prepared in advance. So whichever one of those cities does get the Olympics, they will have an advantage over previous host cities. Now, we did see Rio trying out some new things. We saw this nomadic architecture, as they call it, where you build these structures that can be removed, they can be repurposed, rebuilt for other uses. Now, was this just a cost-saving me measure, or could this be how the Olympics are viewed now? Is something, instead of having these very elaborate buildings, now you have these things that can be reused for the larger community? Well, it remains to be seen how it works out. Most of what is being reused is not the, the huge stadiums, but uh, some of the spectator seating and, and, and some of the infrastructure that supports the, uh, the events. And uh, it's a great idea. I remember them showing it to me, you know, in, in planning stages. But uh, again, I'll believe it when it really happens. If you can take a lot of those structures and put them into schools, that's wonderful. But it hasn't happened yet. And in terms of some of the elements that make an, both a successful and a prosperous Olympics, what do you think really needs to happen? I think what needs to happen is uh, honest planning, because often in order to get the Olympics, the, you know, both within the city and to the International Olympic Committee, the organizing committee, the bid committee, will, will make a lot of claims and they'll say, we're going to get this much money from here, we're only going to spend this much money, and they always, always, always go over budget. The International Olympic Committee, to their credit, has created a new system. It's very quiet, but they they have asked the bid cities to meet benchmarks. So, you know, one year, like there's four cities bidding for the 2024 Olympics, Paris, Los Angeles, Rome, and Budapest. And they have to go to uh, Switzerland and show this is what this is the progress we've made with our funding. This is the way we're going to do it. Then a few months later, they have to do the same thing with transportation and, and infrastructure and uh, building of the venues. So 
this is a, a small but important step the International Olympic Committee is making to make it more uh, viable.